know if you've been watching our podcast, uh, Meredith's Miss Bubbles and uh, Mr. Zinn, and I'm fired up that we're going to be able to do a Zinfandel this, uh, this December collection. Hey everybody, Luzanne here, and I'm so excited. I get to hang out with my buddy, John Vishley. And, um, you know, we spoke about having a Zinfandel coming in December, and we're going to use John Vishley's uh, Zinfandel. And uh, great winemaker. You guys have lately been seeing some really good stuff on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, this is a Russian River Zin, so it's nice and It's pretty. even better. Yeah. Better. So, John, before we get started on describing the Zinfandel, t how did you get into wine? Well, Lou, uh, 10 years ago, 20 uh, 2010, I moved out here from Chicago. What a beautiful place, too. Yes, decided to make a change in my life and uh, switch careers, get, leave the shopping center industry and come out to wine country and start a family brand. Well, I'll tell you what, I've tasted through most all of your wines, and I'm glad you did it. Well, thank you. I really yeah. am. <laughs> you make some phenomenal wines. And, and uh, how many acres do you farm here? So we farm 10 acres, and uh, all of our wines are estate wines. So all of them are estate. Yeah, we're not sourcing fruit from other growers, um, although there's nothing wrong with that. No. Um, yeah. But, you know, our goal was to, uh, to, to have our own vineyard and our own winery facility and uh, for me to make the wine, and then we would move on from there. Well, it's beautiful. This wine here, man, I can't, I just can't tell you. I love this thing. It's sort of, you know, soft and floral, but yet got that delicious spiciness that yes. I love in a Zen yes. and multiple flavors. So how did you make this one? What did you So put? the way that we approach winemaking here is really from a kind of an old world style, um, you know, more of a hands off. Um, tried to shepherd the wine, not manipulate it too heavily. I like that. And um, That's how it tastes too. Yeah, yeah. It just so doesn't we, uh, taste overdone. Right. And you do get a lot of zins. I, I don't know why, I don't know, they want to bring out more flavors or something, they try to overdo it. Yeah, and we do um, a nice combination of new oak and neutral oak. Um, so we let the, the fruit show through in the neutral, but we want to complement it just a little bit with, uh, with some of the new oak. And we typically will uh, find ourselves with Hungarian barrels. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, Vizla is a Hungarian uh, surname. Good. And um, got to represent, right? Yeah, absolutely. Kind of, you know, uh, keep keep the tribe happy. <laughs> yeah, I <right>. so. <laughs> hear you. So these are Russian River grapes, huh? Now, are, was this off the estate, or did you source these grapes? Uh, those grapes, twenty feet away from us. Oh, are, are beautiful. Where this, this wine originated. Some beautiful. Yeah. Wines. So, what are you tasting in this Zinfandel? You know, I typically find myself with a lot of strawberry notes um, yeah it's much popping. more yeah much more so than um, the 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 plummy raisiny uh, type of Zinfandel this is a real kind of a brighter I think that's why I like it better it's I like that I like those flavors mm -hmm. cry, and there's times when I like the deeper plums and yeah there are there are times um, but the fruit that we grow here just seem, seems to lend itself to that style um, year after year um, that's how it comes out, and um, and we also uh, a few times have made a, a terrific uh, rosé from the Zinfandel. Oh, you did? Yes. I love Zinfandel rosé. It's just a richer and more flavorful. Yeah, I it's really um, it. and we leave leave a little RS in it typically. Um, good. You know, good. As much as you know, we don't like sweet wines. Yeah. Um, People, people love them. A lot of people love them. Yeah, yeah, they sell. They sell yeah. the unsweet wines. Don't sell the sweet wines. Yeah. Sell. So, what all, what all varietals do you grow out here? So, in addition to the Zinfandel, we have Petit Syrah, Pinot Noir, uh, all five of the big Bordeaux. So that's Merlot and Cab, Malbec, Cab Franc, Petit Verdot. Isn't that amazing? You guys yeah. do all of those. Yeah, and um, and two kinds of Chardonnays, and I even grow um, a little bit of uh, Prosecco grapes. Alicante Boucher also at a little half a row. Oh, you got a little Alicante yeah. Boucher. Yeah. I love it. A little bit of little bit of red. Red, yes. red skin and red juice. Yeah, Alicante Boucher. You know, it's it's that wonderful grape with the the red uh, the red meat, the red pulp. Yeah, one um, of four grapes in the world. Yeah, I think is red yes. skin and red pulp. Red and, grape, um, red juice. And, and it's a it's a wonderful blender. I've tried repeatedly to do a standalone wine, 
and it just never made the cut for for my taste. So what it, I know it brings to me it brings the fruit up without the acidity up. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of the purpose? Yeah, of an and and very very low tannin. Um, you know, it's all soft, it's all yeah, it's yeah, yeah it's, it's all fruit real and soft. Uh, you're not going to get a, a heavy tannic wine. Um, so it's it's a great wine to use as a topper. Um, I made a, a, a trio blend with the Alicante, Petit Syrah, and Zinfandel. Oh. Uh, that turned out to be a really wonderful killer, wine. Killer. Yeah, my trio. It was that's a kinda, great wine. That's kind of how Joel made it. He did and he, sometimes a little Carignan and mm -hmm. and that. So I love all those uh, blenders with uh, with Zen. But God, you hardly ever see anybody with Alicante Boucher anymore. That's terrific. It's well, not widely you. planted. I yeah. can't thank you enough, and we are so excited to try your Zinfandel, yes. man. Yes. Cheers. Cheers.